among school children by William Butler Yeats. One. I walk through the long schoolroom, questioning. A kind old nun in a white hood replies. The children learn to cipher and to sing, to study reading books and history, to cut and sew, be neat in everything in the best modern way. The children's eyes, in momentary wonder, stare upon a 60-year-old, smiling, public man. 2. I dream of Ledean body bent above a sinking fire, a tale that she told of a harsh reproof or trivial event that changed some childish day to tragedy, told, and it seemed, that our two natures blent into a sphere from youthful sympathy, or else to alter Plato's parable into the yoke in white of the one shell. Three. In thinking of that fit of grief or rage, I look upon one child or the other there and wonder if she stood so at that age. For even daughters of the swan can share something of every paddler's heritage and had that color upon cheek or hair. And thereupon my heart is driven wild. She stands before me as a living child. Four. Her present image floats into the mind. Did Quattrocento finger fashion it, hollow of cheek as though it drank the wind and took a mess of shadows for its meat? And I thought never of Ledean kind had pretty plumage once. Enough of that. Better to smile on all that smile and show there is a comfortable kind of old scarecrow. Five. What youthful mother, a shape upon her lap, honey of generation had betrayed, and that must sleep, shriek, struggle to escape, as recollection or the drug decide, would think her son did she but see that shape, with sixty or more winters on its head, a compensation for the pang of his birth, or the uncertainty of his setting forth. Six. Plato thought nature but a spume that plays upon a ghostly paradigm of things. Solider Aristotle played the taws upon the bottom of a king of kings. World-famous golden-thighed Pythagoras fingered upon a fiddlestick or strings what a star sang and careless muses heard old clothes upon old sticks to scare a bird. 7. Both nuns and mothers worship images, but those the candles light are not as those that animate a mother's reveries, but keep a marble or a bronze repose. And yet they too break hearts, O oh, presences, that passion, piety, or affection knows, and that all heavenly glory symbolize, O oh, self-born mockers of man's enterprise. 8. Labor is blossoming, or dancing where the body is not bruised to pleasure's soul nor beauty born out of its own despair, nor bleary-eyed wisdom out of midnight oil. O chestnut tree, great rooted blossomer, are you the leaf, the blossom, or the bowl? O body swayed to music, O brightening glance, how can we know the dancer from the dance? If you enjoyed this reading, do me a favor and press that like button, and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye.